We're getting a closer look at the redacted version of the affidavit used to justify the FBI raid of former President Trump's Florida home. Uh, the probable cause affidavit lays out the justification to authorize the search that led to agents seizing 11, seizing 11 sets of classified documents. A former President Trump had been calling for the release of the affidavit in full. And so here to weigh in on these latest developments, we have former State Senator Capri Cafaro. Capri, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much. Good morning. Okay, so what new insight have we gained into this search of Trump's home? Like, do you think Trump is satisfied with what he found out from the affidavit? No, I mean, I, I think that, you know, Donald Trump is still, uh, you know, kind of uh, presenting himself as a victim of, you know, he's he said that basically the FBI has broken into his home, for example. When you use language like that, certainly you feel that, that um, you know, the reasoning behind uh coming into his home was unjustified and he had said we had given them so much and things of that nature. So, you know, I, I don't think that Donald Trump is satisfied. I think that he was, you know, trying to call their bluff, but also recognizing that there was no way that they were going to have a fully, uh, you know, transparent uh, release of this document that there was going to be significant redaction because you know there has to be um, you know protection of of witnesses people in the grand jury um, you know the they don't want to necessarily tip the hand of an ongoing investigation I think a few things that we did learn um, is is the fact that there you know remain um, a number of classified documents including top secret documents that uh, you know have. Uh, been in the possession of President Trump um, mm. that, you know, while it took a very long time, it seems, for the National Archives, there was all this back and forth and back and forth um, asking to get the those documents back. They gave over, you know, 15 boxes, um, but they obviously did not give everything back. The question, I think, uh, and I think this is the question for law enforcement, is why? Why were certain things held back and certain things given over? Um, and, wait, wait, wait. I, and I think that there's a big question and the concern that was raised in the affidavit in the parts that we could read mm -hmm. uh, talked about, you know, sort of the custody of the documents and the safety of those documents being mixed in with photos okay, okay, and news wait, clippings wait, 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 and wait, notes. Let's, let's kind of ring it back in, <laughs> yeah. ring it back in just a little bit. Okay, um, just kind of moving on to the to the next question here. This raid did kind of lead uh, FBI agents to be on high alert, um, you know, like even that standoff at, at the field office in Cincinnati and, and yep. some other threats. Yep. Um, so what kind of political fallout could this search and potential legal consequences kind of have on either Trump or the Democratic Party? Yeah, well, I mean, we're, it, we're only time will tell what's going to happen and whether or not Donald Trump is going to be charged with something as a result of um, you know the uh, um, this process, this investigation, obtaining these documents. If it's going to be the Esp Espionage Act, something else. Only time will tell. Obviously, you know if he does get charged with something and he's going to try to run for president in 2024, um, that could create some wrinkles in, in the you know practicalities of running around, running for president. But I do think that you know at least up to this point, Donald Trump is now um, he's benefiting from being back in the news cycle. And I think again, you know. Uh, trying to show himself as being targeted by the government, um, kind of being a victim of, of, of a witch hunt. Um, and, and I think that that is resonating certainly with his base, could motivate them for the, for the, for the midterm elections and certainly, um, you know, could, could galvanize them in a general election. So uh, I actually think uh, this can be politically beneficial for Donald Trump um, and as a result, um, you know, troubling for, for Democrats, at least in, in maybe in 2024. Hmm. So I was actually going to kind of move into uh, the, you know, fall, the elections here, the midterms. Another major announcement this week, Biden was cutting student loan debt by $10,000 for millions of Americans. And it's also drawing yep. criticism from those who paid their loans off. So do you expect this decision to resonate with voters this fall or will this like help or hurt Democrats? I think it's, it's going to be, um, you know, kind of neutral. In, in some ways, I think that there are certainly going to be some, and it, it's going to depend on age group. It's going to depend on on economic bracket, um, you know, because not everyone qualifies for this loan forgiveness. It's it's a small small amount, 
um, ten thousand for individuals that are currently earning under one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, or two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars jointly, um, or twenty thousand dollars for individuals um, that are were recipients of Pell grants. So uh, it's it's kind of a narrow group of individuals trying to be targeted to help those that are lower and middle income. There's also some some changes in regards to um, reducing monthly payments um, and, and, a, and a handful of other things. I don't necessarily think that this is going to be particularly helpful because number one, it doesn't help a huge group of people. Um, number two, um, and as Congressman Ryan had pointed out, it doesn't help individuals that had not gone to college, you know, people that have gone to, to trade school, and maybe, you know, have chosen different career paths. It's not necessarily um, going to help them. And as you noted, people that have paid off their student loans already, um, I think, are frustrated with this perceived handout. Then you also have the progressives that are saying, well, it's just not enough. $10,000 is a drop in the bucket. You know, people have $200,000 of, of loans. Um, you know, this is really not going to help that much. So it, no one is particularly pleased with it, I don't think. Um, and so for that reason, I don't think it's going to necessarily hurt, but I don't think it's going to help. Okay, and, and are recent Democratic wins, you know, like this one on Capitol Hill, maybe enough to boost Democratic candidates going into the midterm elections? What do you think? Uh, you know, I, again, this is an executive action. Um, it's not it's not a legislative action. Um, that doesn't mean that Democrats or Democratic candidates can't run um, and have this as part of their their larger campaign. Um, so, you know, I think that it's about painting priorities. And I think Democrats can use this to say, you know, we care about and we recognize that college affordability is something that is a challenge. And, and you know, Democrats in office are trying to do something about it. I think that it would be more beneficial if uh, people were talking more comprehensively about uh, college tuition, costs associated with those things, maybe even uh, you know further discussions in regards to loan forgiveness for uh, certain services, um, public service, um, you know, uh, serving in medically underserved areas after medical school. Some of that has been actually part of what Biden has done um, in regards to public service, in particular working in the government. Um, but I think that that could be expanded um, in a way where you could encourage people to go into certain professions if you incentivize uh, you know, their college loans being paid off. So I think we would benefit from a bigger conversation, a more comprehensive one, but um, I do think the Democrats can use this as a larger, as part of a larger um, you know, uh, conversation around priorities and investing in our future, investing in the middle class. Uh, but I think as a single issue, it's not, it's not gonna do as much. Okay, Capri, thank you so much for joining us this morning. That's all the time we have for this segment. My pleasure. You have a great rest of your weekend. You too.